Four Democratic lawmakers who represent Oregon are now calling on the inspectors general of the Justice and Homeland Security Departments to investigate these actions. Joining me now is one of those Democrats, Congresswoman Suzanne, uh, Suzanne Bonamici, who represents Oregon's first congressional district. Congresswoman, thank you for uh, being with us. I was talking to Representative uh, Blumenauer last night, and he said to me that there was no overture from the federal government. There was no request. There was no coordination. There was no offer that these, these uh, federal people, I don't know what you call them, troops, or officers showed up. They come without badges. They use unmarked cars. Um, I, I'm glad that the Homeland Security Secretary said that they've got 100 DHS officers. At least we have some sense of who they are. But is it your understanding that there was no coordination with local authorities on this? Well, that's right, Allie. And thank you for having me on the show. And, and I just want to start by saying, you know, we, we're grieving today with the, the loss of uh, Congressman John Lewis, and I'm glad you're recognizing him. Absolutely. Uh, and especially with what's happening now in in Portland, I had the honor of serving with Congressman Lewis and walking across the Edmund Pettus Bridge uh, with him on the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. And I'm bringing his voice with me in this fight. So yes, it's true that, that we did not invite uh, these officers to come to Oregon. They are not welcome here. Everyone should be alarmed at what's happening. And it really started, uh, heightened the, the, the tension in our community when a week ago today, one of these officers shot in the head a peaceful protester. Now, this was one of these supposed to be non-lethal, less lethal uh, munitions. But this young man, 26 years old, who was standing across the street from the federal building, is my understanding, he's still in the hospital. We don't know how he's doing, but he had to have surgery. This is not helping our community. And then after this young man, 26 years old, peacefully protesting was shot. Then we started hearing these stories about people walking through the streets of Portland, not at a federal building, and being picked up by these camouflage clad, unmarked, uh, in un unmarked cars, grabbing them off the street and taking them sometimes with their faces covered and questioning them. This is uh, outrageous and alarming, and it's not helping our community. It's terrifying people here. And we have to remember why they are protesting. They're protesting police brutality. They're protesting the murder of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and so many others. We don't stop police brutality with more police brutality. Congresswoman, I, I just, I mean, I, I just think it, it bears saying over and over again, these, these images that my viewers are watching on the left side of the screen, this is America in 2020. Charlie Pierce wrote a column in which he said, yeah. Portland is being Pinochet. These are expressions we use about other countries. It's the kind of thing that, uh, that my colleagues and I have covered in other countries when governments are, are, are quelling dissent and, and silencing the opposition. Unmarked cars, police with no, uh, you know, federal officers with no badges on them. The, the absence of accountability. Right. This is this is Portland, Oregon. This is a wonderful community, a great state. And the presence of these officers here who are terrifying our community uh, are, again, making it um, much worse. They're exacerbating the tensions here. They are not welcome. We are demanding answers from this administration. And I have to say that this feels like the, the, the president, who was supposed to be a president in a democracy, is acting like a dictator and trying to deflect from his failed leadership on addressing the coronavirus pandemic and his other inadequate uh, leadership. And, and he's drawing attention away from that and trying to show that he's a law and order president. This is neither law nor order. Uh, Congressman, I want to ask you, uh, I, I know you uh, paid respects to John Lewis and you were walking uh, across the Edmund Pettus Bridge with him. Uh, what do you remember about him? Well, what I remember about Congressman Lewis is that, first of all, he was always, he was a brilliant man, but always so gentle, so kind, and so calm. And walking through the Capitol with him, people would come up to him all the time. He's a legend, a hero. And they would ask him to say hello or for an autograph. He was so kind to everyone. And when he was in a room, you could feel his presence in such a positive way. Mm -hmm. And I hear his voice saying, never give up. Never give in. Always keep the faith. 
We're going to miss him. Congresswoman, thank you for joining me. We are going to miss him, and we are going to follow the situation in, in uh, Portland very closely. Congresswoman from Oregon, Susan Bonamici. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.